In our last chapter, we talked about ambient occlusion, which is the first half of this uh, global illumination myth that we're going over. Ambient occlusion being the tendency that our model has to cast shadows on itself uh, when it's shadowing the light coming in from the environment. So the second half of global illumination is the actual light coming in from the environment. If we only have ambient occlusion, we're basically saying the light coming in from our environment is 100% white. And most environments aren't like that. So in this chapter, uh, we're going to talk about how to get uh, the light coming in from our environment effect. Now, in order to achieve this light coming in, uh, we need to use a cube map. So I want to talk first about what a cube map is. Basically, a very simple representation of our environment could be a cube. So if you think about a cube, if you're on the inside of the cube, like if you're in a box, for example, and each side of the box is painted to look like, you know, a big wide open environment. If there weren't, if there weren't lighting on the box to give you clues of where the edges of the sides of the box were, uh, you could potentially be fooled into thinking that you're, you weren't really inside a box, but that you were actually in a very large environment. And that's the whole idea behind cube mapping. You basically, it's six different textures all combined into one. And when we arrange those textures in a cube shape, we, we end up with a cube map. So let's jump over here to Photoshop really quick. And this image uh, represents a cube map. So here we have the, uh, the front, the, the back, the top, the bottom, the left, and the right. So these are the six different images that come together to form a cube map. So in this chapter, our goal is going to be to alter our shader, which currently only supports ambient occlusion. And we also want to add a new slot here so that it can now support our cube map. So let's jump into Effects Composer. And the first thing that we need to do is come down here to our uh, the little elements that, that form this, the slots for us to add maps to. And I'm just going to copy this light map element and paste it in here to give us a new slot. And now we need to alter this code so that it'll support a cube map. So instead of light map, I'm going to name this variable cube map. And instead of light map here, I'm going to call it env map. And that stands for environment map. For our UI name, instead of light map, I'm going to call this ambient cube. And what that'll help people understand is that this cube map is, uh, is supposed to be the ambient light coming in from the environment. Now here we have string texture type equals 2D. And we're not actually going to use a 2D map here. We're going to use a cube map. So we need to change this to type equals cube so that our code knows to treat this uh, cube map uh, as a cube instead of as a, a, a flat 2D texture. And of course, we're not going to be using UV coordinates on the surface of our model to sample our cube map. Uh, we're going to be using vectors, and we'll talk about that in a minute. So I don't need uh, to specify a mapping channel since we're not using UVs at all. Next, I need to come down here to the samplers. And just like I did with the UI code, I'm going to copy our light map sampler, paste it in here again. So our sampler is the unit in our code that's actually fetching the color uh, from the, the texture. And instead of sampler 2D, we need to change this to sampler cube. And we're going to call this, instead of light map sampler, we're going to call it cube map sampler. And this variable here needs to match our UI element so that my sampler knows which texture to sample. So we're going to be sampling from cube map. And there we go. There are samplers done. So now let's come down here to the pixel shader and get into the bit where we actually use our cube map. So l let me explain a little bit uh, how this process is going to work. And then I'll show you uh, what the code is going to do. So we have our, Im imagine that our teapot here is surrounded by a cube. And we need to figure out um, what colors from the cube to apply to the teapot. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our surface normal 
and cast a ray out from the teapot. In every position on the teapot, we're going to cast a ray out in the direction of the surface normal. And where that normal intersects with our cube map cube, uh, whatever color is in that particular location, that's the color that we're going to apply to the surface of our teapot. Now imagine if my cube is here and I'm rotating my teapot around like this, but my cube is staying in the same place, it makes it so the colors are not affixed to the surface of the teapot, but as I rotate the teapot around, uh, different colors are applied uh, because my normals are now pointing in different directions. I'll show you what I mean once we get, once we get the code working. Let's jump back to Effects Composer. And what I'm going to do is come right in here where we have our normal. And I'm going to say float3 world norm equals n. So we're creating a new variable called, whoops, float3 world norm. We're creating a new variable called world norm. And this is the vector that we're going to use to look up into our cube map. So I'm going to say float for env, and this is the color that we're going to be fetching from our cube map that represents the color from the environment. Now when we, when we sample a regular texture, we use text2d, which are, is our built-in intrinsic function. And instead of text2d, uh, because we're sampling a cube, we're going to say text cube. Makes sense, right? And we need to sample uh, using our sampler. So I'll scroll back up here to the top where our QMAP sampler is. This is our, the name of our sampler. So I'll copy that name. And we're going to come right down here to our, uh, where we're sampling our QMAP. And I'm going to paste that in. So now uh, our intrinsic function, we're passing in QMAP sampler. And instead of sampling the cube map with texture coordinates, like our text2d with texture coordinates, we're going to sample it with a vector. And so we're going to use world norm to sample our, uh, our cube map. So basically says, this says in the direction of uh, the normal on the surface of the model, we're going to grab whatever pixel in the cube map is in that direction. Now I'm going to come down here, so we're actually using our uh, env value. I'm going to come down here and just say, and I'm going to multiply this in. So uh, for our ambient color, we're, we're multiplying by our, our light map texture, our ambient occlusion, and also by our cube map texture. So I'll save this. Looks like we didn't get any errors, so let's jump over to max. Now you'll notice that our teapot turned black. And that's because my new ambient cube slot that I just added is empty. Whenever you have an empty slot, it's going to give you a zero for that value. And so zero, obviously, is black. So I need to click on this slot and come in here and apply a cube map. So I've included a couple of cube maps on the DVD. The first one I want to apply is a mirror cube map. And this isn't, this isn't the cube map that we're going to be using for the final result, but I want to apply this mirror cube map just so you can get a better idea of, of what's happening. So I'll put that one in the slot. And let's, let's take a look at our teapot here. Uh, it's kind of dark. So one little trick that we can do is we can come in here to our ambient color. And our ambient color is white right now, uh, where each of the colors has a value of 1. Uh, but since these are decimal numbers, we can actually go higher than 1. So what I'm going to do is bump each of our colors up to 4. So we're basically multiplying our cube map texture by 4. And that serves to kind of brighten it up and compensate for our dark texture. Now what you might notice is that our cube map is actually coming in on its side. If you can look here. Uh, this is a picture of my house. This is a cube map that I created from my backyard. And uh, so here's the sky, and here's the ground over here. And it's actually uh, sideways. And the reason for this is that 3ds Max is a Z-up environment. And standard DirectX cube maps are created for a Y-up environment. So we actually need to fix this and compensate for this in our code. 
So let's come back in here to Effects Composer and and uh, add in some code to compensate for Y up versus Z up. So I'm going to say float3 world norm equals N. And instead of N, I'm going to type N.XZY. And so what we're doing here is swapping the Z and the Y axes uh, to compensate for Y up versus Z up. Now, when I save it, we'll jump back over to Max. And you'll notice that immediately our cube map switches. So now we have the sky uh, coming from the top. And what I was saying before, uh, if I move my teapot around, rotate it in different directions, uh, the environment is not sticking to the surface like a normal uh, 2D texture map is. Because we're using the normals of the model to sample into our cube, uh, when I rotate around, uh, the normals are getting different results depending on uh, what part of the cube map they're pointing at. So that's how. Uh, environment and reflection mapping work and we're not actually going to get into that uh, in this chapter uh, but I, I just wanted to show you uh, how that worked so like I said we're actually using a mirror cube map right now and so each position on the surface is is getting the light from one very specific direction and actually what we want to use is a diffuse cube map and what that means is each pixel in our cube map, instead of representing the light, representing the light coming from that specific direction, the pixel is going to represent the light coming in from a 180 degree hemisphere in that direction. So each pixel in, the, in a diffuse map is representing a light coming from that entire direction of the environment, not just one specific direction but a 180 degree hemisphere, all that light averaged together uh, for that pixel. So let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna load up the uh, 16D cube map. And now you'll notice that uh, it's really blurry. So basically in the process of creating this cube map, uh, I've averaged all of the light coming from each direction so each pixel represents the light coming from a 180 degree hemisphere. Now the nice thing about this type of cube map is it represents uh, the lighting basically and I think it looks pretty cool because you know we've, we've got kind of a bright area on this side and kind of a darker area over here a slightly different color blue over here than over here and it just gives a really nice uh, variability to the lighting and Combining our ambient occlusion together with our diffuse cube map gives some really amazing results. Now, just before we close, I want to explain that diffuse cube maps are created basically by taking a mirror cube map and running a filter on them called uh, diffuse convolvement. And so in the next chapter, we're going to go over the process of generating these cube maps. I'm going to talk about creating mirror cube maps and I'm also going to talk about the process of creating diffusely convolved cubes.